What up, peeps? It's me, Karsten Runquist, everybody's favorite YouTuber who never says anything wrong ever and now loves to complain about things sometimes. I love the film industry because you never really know what they're gonna be into next. They go through these weird phases every so often that apparently everybody in society wants to see. As of recent, I've noticed a particular phase that is already getting pretty irritating for a variety of different reasons. What phase am I talking about? I'm talking about this new music movie phase. Now, this could mean a lot of things. I mean, we could be talking about A Star is Born or whatever, but I'm talking about a more specific type of film. I'm talking about those that are about giant bands. Back in 2015, we got the first one, which was Straight Outta Compton, a film about one of the biggest and most significant groups in rap music, NWA. Three years later, we get a long-awaited film about Queen, specifically Freddie Mercury, called Bohemian Rhapsody. And now, less than a year after Bohemian Rhapsody, we're getting a film about Elton John called Rocket Man. Not to mention, apparently, there's a new David Bowie movie happening soon that isn't even starring Tilda Swinton as Bowie. I mean, what the fuck? Now, I will admit this is only four films, but when you take into consideration that it's only been, what, like four years? That feels like a weird amount of films about the same type of topic. But what is so wrong with these films? People seem to really like them. What's the issue? Well, where do I start? Uh, they're all the same. Now, of course, Rocket Man is not out yet. All we really have is a teaser trailer, but already it feels weirdly similar to both Bohemian Rhapsody and Straight Outta Compton. They're all completely different cinematographers and directors, but they all seem to look the same visually for some reason. And yes, I will admit, because they all require concert scenes, there is automatically going to be some similarities with regards to lighting and angles, but aside from concert shots, they choose these same shots that always feel like they're going, look how cinematic we made this look. Like following the artist from behind, why is there a shot like that in every single trailer? They also always feel super tight and focus a lot more on handhelds and only get wide when we're dealing with concert shots. And yes, this makes sense for why they do that, like making it handheld and getting up close makes us feel like we're in the position of these famous artists and claustrophobic whatever. But my thing is there are a lot of other ways you can shoot these types of stories. We're dealing with creative people, why not get creative with our storytelling? Not to mention they also all feel like they have the exact same color palettes. Straight Outta Compton is an exception because, you know, it's a bit darker with its tone, but with these two others, it's like they're on the exact same level in terms of how colorful they are. And they're about two completely different figures in the music industry. Looking past technical aspects, they also really like focusing on the same things when they tell these stories. They don't get creative with structure, it always starts at the beginning and builds up. There's always a Hollywood party scene. There's also always that one really cringy scene where they're in the studio and they're like, I'm gonna be honest, Fred, I think this is gonna be a hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got an idea. What's up? What if for this part, I let out a little scream? Like a scream? Yeah, like a little scream, you know, a little, little yelp. Can I be honest with you, Fred? I think you're a goddamn genius. Alright. <laughs> I mean, as dated as it feels, it makes me look back at films like 8 Mile and kind of appreciate it a bit more. Sure, it's not a direct depiction of Eminem's life the way these others are, it's technically fiction, but it tells its story in a much more interesting and unique way than a lot of these newer films. To me, that's just the surface of why these films are irritating though. The real reason why these films are so annoying to me and, in a way, problematic is a lot deeper than that. At the end of the day, we're talking about artists here. We're talking about another group of artists, aka a production company making a movie about another group of artists. Here's where I'm going with this. Bands like Queen, NWA, and Elton John, they were as huge and as influential as they were because they were a breath of fresh air and were the epitome of creativity. Even grouping them all together like this feels weird because they're all making completely different types of music. So now imagine all these groups getting their own movies about them and they all look and feel the same and a whole new generation is introduced to a group that feels very similar to the other. Funny thing is, you don't have to imagine because that actually exists now. A great tribute to an artist is something like At Eternity's Gate that came out earlier this year a film about Vincent Van Gogh. This movie is weird. It's shot in a lot of strange ways, it's at times uncomfortable, it's grimy, it takes risks. It feels like something that Vincent Van Gogh, as weird as this is gonna sound, would approve of. Similar to Van Gogh, this film stands on its own level of uniqueness and is a fantastic tribute to his art because it takes the same risks he would, truly making us feel like we are in his mind. It's why I watch films like Bohemian Rhapsody and leave the theater feeling so dirty. Bohemian Rhapsody isn't an awful film, it's just fine, and I think that's the biggest problem about it. Do you really think that Freddie Mercury, someone who hated mediocrity, would approve of something like this? Sure, the other members of Queen had a say in the film, but this is a movie about Freddie, and these other other members, they just, they weren't on the same level of creativity as him. Now, of course, films like Straight Outta Compton did have Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, both of whom were members of NWA, working on the film. And yes, this film does do a good job at telling the
the story of the group and it's significantly better than Bohemian Rhapsody, but it feels like it's not even close to bringing the amount of griminess and aggressive attitude that NWA brought to pop culture. And this isn't me saying all these films need to be as impactful as the original groups, that would be absurd, but I just feel like the art should do a better job at representing who these artists were and what their art meant, rather than just saying they were the biggest group in history followed with a shot of them partying. I really have so much admiration for NWA, Queen, Elton John, David Bowie, etc. When you're getting a whole movie made about you, it used to be something exciting. It used to be so cool to watch your favorite artist that you grew up listening to on the big screen and see the behind the scenes look at their life. But unfortunately, now it feels like Hollywood pulling yet again another cash grab. It feels like such a cheap and easy way for these companies to make money because, oh, they like Queen, of course they're gonna see it no matter how shitty it is. I cannot tell you how many conversations I've had with people about Bohemian Rhapsody where it's ended with them like, I mean, it was bad, but like, Queen was in it, so it was automatically pretty decent. So yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about this, but if this video still has you thinking that Bohemian Rhapsody is a pretty good movie, just, just remember that Brian Singer is a pedophile.